Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Best Podcast (laughs) Ever, where three idiots you don't know talk about a hobby you've never heard of. However, believe it or not, the hobby part is the lie today, not the three idiots part. Uh, Because if you'll count, we have one, two, three idiots for the first time in half a A decade? A really long time, yeah. Uh, God, I mean, the lost episode, I guess, that we did in in 2020 uh, (laughs) would be the last. Yeah, so we we actually have the band back together, and I want to point out, uh, at each episode, we're getting better and better. At each episode, it's sounding better. At each episode, it's looking better. Uh, We're also getting less views for episodes, so that's fucking hilarious. So, (laughs) welcome to... Welcome to Best Podcast Ever art whatever <laughs> and we are just yeah. absolutely back in the dregs of youtube greetings everyone <laughs> we are here we'll go ahead and uh, do a reintroduction i think because it's been a minute hello everyone my yeah. name's brian i worked in the slot car industry for about a decade before moving to australia thus derailing best podcast ever and any momentum we had mike who are you uh i'm i'm mike i uh have dabbled in slot car racing since uh, 1989 or so. And uh, for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to turn this into a podcast a few years ago uh, because I was too lazy to make video content. And uh, this is this is what we got. And Kevin started racing slot cars in 05 at the store. Captain of the team, captain of other teams, uh, team champion now defending reigning. All that good shit, plus a lot of other stuff. I, I don't know if you still want to claim captain of this team. I, I feel like this is the one that you like. <laughs> you Alan Smithy it, captain of BTE, Alan Smithy. Like <laughs> better than Alan Man. <laughs> well, there you go. You so well, we are talking. Eight's on fire. Speaking of slot cars, so we jumped. Yeah, I was going to say we jumped right into talking about slot cars after Brian promised that that's not what we were doing. Well, that's uh, the best way to get you guys to do anything is to say we're not going to do it. Or tell us not to. That means you told you know we're totally gonna turn that MEV Corvair into something. <laughs> uh, Take that, that Bauer was... Volvo. Take that, indeed. <laughs> Bauer Volvo, Bauer uh, Type Three. What other Bowers did I ruin? Mm. Uh, Quadralam has entered the chat. <laughs> oh man. I like how Quadrilams, which for those of you listening at home, if you're not familiar with vintage HO racing, uh, was a motor that came in the Super 2 that just had four laminations on the motor as opposed to the standard. Normally they had anywhere between one to three. You know, some of the some of the newer ones have three. Some of the older ones had one. Normally they had about two. But they were like, oh, well, we like triple wound this motor and we put four laminations on it. So it's the Quadrilam and it's like legendary. And it, it was it was okay. You know, I mean, it's all right. More, more rotating mass is what you always want. Uh, well, that, that's how they, they did with the polymers. Well, that's what yeah. they did with the with the T jets back in the day. That's why they were any good at anything. It was because the center right. of gravity was at least low, as opposed to Atlas and Tyco that was putting sheets of leads on top of their chassis to try and make it run better. <laughs> well, that was a that was like a model train thing, right? Where it was just make the chassis as heavy as possible so it's smooth. Worm gear, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of worm I, gear going know, on. I mean, if you're dealing with a train, you know, it's on flanged wheels, so it takes a lot more to make it tip over. Uh, so you just want, you know, you just want overall weight for smoothness. You're not really concerned with where the weight is. Yeah. Well, and I guess Atlas and Tyco both were like, a train is a car. Those are the same thing. But it was one of those things, too, where eventually the can-style motor did win in the slot car world. And that's probably for a handful of reasons. But I think the biggest reason is slot cars were never, like, mass-produced in any real amount. Like, everything was more or less, these motors were made by someone else. And then they were right. shoved in the car. The only people who didn't do that was Aurora. And even they eventually came around to the can style motor, you know, in the Magna Traction 2 uh, Super G days. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, right, like the, you know, the, what's called the pancake uh, style motor that's in the, uh, you know, T Jet and its, and its uh, descendants, like where else, what other device are you going to see a motor like that in? Right. But the can motor is pretty much a universal design that works on, you know, toothbrushes or whatever. <laughs> Racing Dremels down the straightaway. <laughs> start racing the sanders drag race the sanders well, i have i have seen that online 
They put like the RC car bodies on. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, it's probably more entertaining than than drag racing slot cars because drag racing slot cars because once you no longer have to worry about slowing down, it just becomes a game of who has the fastest motor, and they're done right. in fractions of a second i thought the race where we ran the willies was pretty cool because we had to run the same car for the road race and then we set the drag strip up to see if you know okay who wins the road race but how will they fare in the drag race and it was totally different outcome that was fun i mean there's plenty of fun ways to have fun with slot cars it's just it's always been our running gag that you can have fun with slot cars or you can race in the highly serious competitive natures where we, we keep making fun of the, you know, your reputation in the small community is on the line bit because people take what should be a hilarious thing to do on a Friday night and they turn it into super serious. Yeah. As Kevin points to his trophies in the back, although some of those are for brass wars. <laughs> One of them is for brass wars. <laughs> Well, in your defense, Kevin, you usually have fun because you're winning. But <laughs> uh, Kevin did break no. one of the plexiglass retainers on the NJ Hobby track. Uh, I think because one of us took him out. I can't remember if it was you I, or I, me. I, I think it, I think it was you because I think I was I think I was in my usual spot running the race when that happened, and well, I was I like maybe I, maybe I can just saw a hole in the floor and <laughs> run away you you almost <laughs> destroyed the uh both the ceiling and the table when mike did that like 400 degree spin and won oh, the race the yeah. The yeah classic gt race yeah with the, that, with the p68 yeah that i gave you yes <laughs> and then I bought my own just to troll you with it. <laughs> Those are good oh, times. Man. I thought you should have just bought Kevin's. <laughs> like, Kevin, here's a hundred bucks. Yeah. This is mine now. <laughs> what was I what car was I running that night? Was that the uh the Gulf or was that the uh Ken Miles? I think it was the Ken Miles one. Uh, in when I picture it, that's what I say, the black and white one. Was that the same race that, that kid speared? The car, like from the side of the the hairpin or whatever, he just totally missed that corner and speared the side of it. Yeah, I can't remember who that was, but that was uh, <laughs> it split I'm the body like, right by the rear door. Oh yeah, that's the I'm same just remembering car. tumbling off the overpass of. of oh the, God! Uh, the, I since we're on this topic, let, let's go ahead and go into worst slot car wrecks we've kind of been part of. And I still think my absolute winner is I came off the track doing the um. Essentially what became, it, we called it Trans Am, but it was Ford versus Camaro. And right. I came off oh, the back turn in the uh, the routed track, and I actually jumped over the little wall, and I hit the glass <laughs> of the showcase, and it deleted my black and gold Boss 302 to the point where I had to oh, buy a new car immediately because the chassis and the body of my car were, were donezo. They were gone. Carrera NASCAR on that track was pretty good. They usually left the table. Oh, yeah. Especially I think if you the had worst the, uh, of all the wrecks. No, go ahead. I was just thinking uh, this was true on every track, actually. If you were running the, the Torino in Carrera NASCAR and it flipped over for any reason, it would become its own ramp and just launch itself. Yeah. Off its <laughs> I think the most dangerous racing uh, was when we had to put the face shield on. What was that? The Skelectric <laughs> track for Magnet F1 or Magnet IndyCar. Oh, the, the one I'm sorry. that was on the back stretch. No, no, it was, the, one no, it was, it was the middle straightaway on the Skelectric layout. Yeah, there, there were, we had to put a sneeze guard at the starter's position so that the, that oh person Oh my would god, not yeah, I remember putting that up. <laughs> yeah, we had I those two big orange... coming back from college and wondering what it was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, I Why remember putting... sponsor decals on it? <laughs> we put sponsor decals on it. It was just the, you know, uh, NJ Hobby, you know, having PPE before it was cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We've just lost more subscribers. Uh, oh my god. The uh well yeah, I mean those the uh the Skelectric um F1 cars, I I had a couple that would just like when you applied torque to the rear wheels instead of driving, it would just do a wheelie and then the braids would be off the track and you would have no brake. So well, that magnet was between the motor and the rear axle, so there was no front grip unless you ran the Skelectric Sport magnet jammed right, in the front exactly. uh you know, footwell. Yeah, that's right. So if, yeah, so if you applied the power just wrong and did a wheelie, you would just like sail straight down the down the middle Here, straight of that track. How many Schumacher F two thousand fours were ruined? Or the uh, Walrus Nose Williams. 
Here's a better question. How many Skeletrix slot cars from that era are still functional? Because I think any time... Um, yeah. None, yeah. No, roughly zero. I mean, I have the the BT Heritage Mustang, but it's not on its original chassis because the chassis broke. <laughs> so, well, I still have the body of the black Camaro I won my first Trans Am race with. Yeah, so the those Vic were on the same, That's right. Those were of the same era. Uh, well, R.I.P. Skeletrix always <laughs> confused me because do you guys remember when Skeletrix Sport was actually a thing? Never reminded me by yeah. talking about the magnet. But what they used to do is when the cars first came out. They would come in a little blue clamshell box with a yellow like holder over it. And you would open mm -hmm. it up and it would kind of be a display piece. But also because Skeletrix was like, well, we want it to be both collector and functional. The sport ones had bronze bushings as opposed to plastic ones and a stronger yep. magnet. Right. And that was the only difference. Know like, magnet. you know, they, they had a, a slightly stronger magnet. It wasn't not by a lot, but a little bit. And I don't remember the bronze bushings. That's no, they, interesting. They had I remember bushings, they yeah. were black, but they were bronze. Huh. They were like coated. Okay. Well, and yeah. here's my other favorite thing about that. It those cars break the chassis when you try to get them in and out. Yeah. <laughs> well, those always sold out. And we would have kind of the other one. Because what they would do is they would have like the popular car be the sports car. And then the unlimited car would be like the, the, team, yeah, like the team B car. Right. Why did they ever stop doing that? Those always sold out. I never understood why Skeletrix Sport and I never understand anything Skeletrix does because Skeletrix <laughs> seems to be like, uh, what was what's the name of that movie from the eighties where Will Smith? Uh, no, no, um, no, it wasn't Will Smith. It was uh, Eddie Murphy had to lose all his money. Brewster's Millions. Yeah. Does somebody own Skeletrix <laughs> and has to Brewster's Million this company into the ground? Like that's the only I, thought process I can have about it. I mean, even the fact that they had a sport track, like they had for a while, regular scale extra track and sport track. Like, was do you difference? want your track? Yeah. Like, do you want your track to be bad by regular scale extra track? Well, like, that, why, that was a why transition are you selling, thing. I guess. Was that what it was? I mean, I know eventually they stopped making the, the non-sport one. But yeah, because essentially those molds iteration. existed forever and they were transitioning to sport track. So for, I'd say about four or five years, they sold both. And Skelex, yeah. and not a Skelex, uh, SEX just never got the memo. Nope. I, they just, I guess that was like, uh, yeah, I guess that's like the, the AFX track that would lock side to side versus the uh, the Tomy track that is also AFX. Yeah. A a okay. it's, it's, Going to SEX's uh, motor contacts real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, where where they decided that the best feature of T jets was having these riveted <laughs> electrical pathways on the chassis that couldn't you couldn't do anything with, and they were like, let's copy that uh, on a one thirty second car and have a can motor that torques itself away from where the power is when you turn when you apply power to it. Oh man, I hated those cars, except the pro versions. Again, you know. Well, my favorite thing it, it's, it's much like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini where. The pro version of the SEX car had less features, but cost more. Right. We took stuff out and we charged you for it. Although I still well, the, think the absolute winner of dumb race shit was the Ninko Lexan chassis. <laughs> the clear one? Yeah, that was made of Lexan. Oh, those things were brittle as hell. Yeah, they're yeah. Lexan. <laughs> <laughs> those things I'm just were, thinking, they were terrible. I'm, I'm thinking about this collection, the the SEX Sport uh, Audi R8 that had that little like rubber the brake. I ran that. Yeah, the, yeah, the tra essentially a transmission brake, right? Where when you released the when you when you powered down the motor, you know, if you had the set screws in the chassis loose enough, uh, the powertrain would kind of slide back into the thing a little bit under deceleration, and it would increase the braking force. It was an interesting thought. Uh, I, I ran never, that I on really the. I did on the uh, the Skeletrix layout actually really well, but when we switched to routed, I I went away from it. I think because of yeah. the Lola being around, but yeah, it worked for a while. Yeah, I could see on the Skeletrix layout we used to run on where you would want maximum braking force. Uh, I mean, especially with the Boxer two out. running those low gearing, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I miss I miss. Hey, there's that. the dryer. The 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 Boxer the Boxer two the flat six R. Oh, oh my God! The flat six R that was just the best motor. The motor still. Yeah. Do, they, do they still make them? I don't know. I don't know about the red one, but I know they make them. 
If you were talking about best motors, though, I think we got to talk about the ball bearing. Oh, that yeah. ball bearing Eight, motor was fucking lying. That was a that was such a bullshit. Okay, so to give you guys some context, of all the at motors home, I have known in my travels. <laughs> okay, Co context is important. So yeah. uh, it was a company called Scale Auto, and the way NJ Hobby used to do their rules is whatever the company claimed the motor to be. That is what we would run it as. So we would have races where we would say, okay, max RPM is like 20,000. Yeah, we had a number of races that were capped at 20,000 specifically to keep the flat six R away. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was the, it was the Skeletrix makes the best everything ever rule, essentially. And we, we capped it at 20,000. And there was this ball bearing motor, which, yes, it did have a ball bearing in it as opposed to a bushing. But I refuse, it had two. I refuse to believe that two ball bearings suddenly makes the car handle that good. Yeah, speed, yeah. acceleration, deceleration, whatever. That thing's magnets were so <laughs> dumb and it just dominated everything. And to make it even better, because obviously putting ball bearings in a slot car motor is expensive. It only existed for like two or three years and then was never made again. Right. And... Yeah, it was it unbeatable. Didn't fit the chassis at all either. Yeah, you had to force it, no, but it was just—it was worth it. I never had the the short can version of it. I only got my hands on one, and it was the it was the long can. Uh, I I had a short can version, and the ball bearing exploded. I ran the uh, short cans in the GT40 class. Yeah, yeah, I wanted a short can one to put in. Uh, you had to run in, the, in that class too. Um, well, so cut, for uh, cut to the slow mo of me smashing a Shark Twenty with a sledgehammer. It did not fit the uh, the the short end of the the slotted pod very well. The round end was just way smaller than the pod was, so you had to hot glue it in. Uh, hot glue, Got the it. official sponsor of DIY. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Uh, for you guys who are just uh, who are now hearing this part of the conversation as as we come back to it, uh, yes, that was a fun racing liveries that made you hate the the <laughs> actual sponsors. Oh yeah, that's what we were going to twenty talk about. twenty minutes <laughs> into the con well, we've lured people in by talking about slot cars for twenty minutes. So yeah. let's go ahead and talk about what we actually planned here. Kevin had a good idea, which was to talk about. Uh, slot car and actual race car liveries that had the opposite effect because we always try and talk about like have you ever bought anything because a race car advertised it and I think we can all kind of agree no but have you ever I... actively avoided anything because it was on a car and I, I would say to start the conversation it's probably a good idea to avoid anything that's advertised on an F1 car just as like a flat rule as silence falls apart. It was more on the NASCAR end uh, of it. Like, you know, man, Dave Marcus sucks. I really don't want anything from Realtree. <laughs> yeah. Or anything uh, Robert Presley does. <laughs> yeah, that that's why I never started chewing Skull. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? You didn't like Harry Gant or Rick Mast? You didn't oh, want carbon yeah, monoxide poisoning? I was thinking Robert. I was thinking of, <laughs> that was Rick Mast, right? That almost died of carbon monoxide. Yeah, it was. Oh, my God. Uh, it also got pushed that, around Talladega by a lap down car to get the win. Yeah. When he ran out was, of gas. That was so bizarre how there were two skull cars that were not teammates. Um, I mean, that this is, again, we're already off topic, but uh, like I, I, there was some like the, the, the one skull car that was Rick Mast and the 33 skull car that was Harry Gant were like loosely affiliated somehow, but like they, they wouldn't even run the same manufacturer body style. Uh, at any point that I can think of. And one was Skull Classic and one was Skull Bandits. Well, n advertising on NASCAR always seems so interesting to me only because back in the day, it seemed like people had the same sponsor for a while. Now it seems like they change up the cars every race because they're just wraps. They're not painted anymore. And even beyond yeah, that, that, you have you have Home Depot versus Lowell's, even though I don't have any like preference for either. It's just I never saw a Lowell's where I lived. <laughs> Well, neither of them are even in the sport now. Really? They both, yeah, they, they both exited. They, they both left. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Probably because yeah, they both that's, realized that's, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I mean, that that's the same thing that happened in, in, in IndyCar. And I, I think it's in both cases. I mean, yeah, part of it is that it's easy to change the car from one race to the next. But it, the main thing is that, as I've said, you know, 
probably in this space before. Uh, there's just so many smarter ways to, you know, spend marketing money than slap it on a car and hope people see it. I, um, I still and, say setting it on fire so that you'll be warm <laughs> is a better use than so giving it to unfortunately, a team. Yeah, unfortunately for the entire industry, people figured that out. Um, so, I mean, that, that's been a, you know, a problem basically for 20 years for the entire industry. Well, but between that and um, like, that's why you only see shady companies going back to my F1 thing. Like F1 seems right. to be purely fueled by crypto now. Uh, yeah, yes, pretty much. I was talking uh, about that earlier. Yeah. I mean, that that's replaced tobacco as the thing, you know, as the shady product that advertises an F1, uh, you know after a brief cameo by energy drinks besides Res red bull yeah uh, it, it how may. much money does red bull have to launder that they have two f1 teams how much money and, is, and does red bull have to set on fire before F1 people teams. realize that they're red bull sponsors anything though like how much money yeah, do I they mean, have selling sugar water that <laughs> they have multiple uh sponsored drivers for different manufacturers like look at their yeah, MotoGP gp I, stuff yeah, I mean, it, they re Red Bull is the Marlboro of today, right? In terms of the fact yeah. that they well, sponsored it, drivers no, it's, and it's, teams. It's even more than that because in F1 now, they're taking over Honda's engine program. So Red right. Bull, a soda manufacturer and seller, <laughs> is going to be an engine manufacturer. When is Red Bull going to come out with a like, sports car? Like, <laughs> but it's still Honda, and also they did with Aston Martin that got defunct because they split. <laughs> right, but yeah, the uh, I mean the the engines are currently still being built by, or they they are still yeah right. They're still being built by. Honda. They're still Honda for a idea. couple more years. I mean, the idea is eventually Red Bull will start building them but they're going to build them from the design of honda anyway i mean they're not and the honda people shape. are still working for them yeah so i mean it's more like a red bull sponsored engine like any number of sponsored engines going back to probably tag mclaren porsche tag. yeah and then more recently, Chrome. Tag, more recently tag red bull renault uh but yeah i mean think how many sponsored names the renault engine had over the years mecha chrome super tech uh Asia Tech, <laughs> but, uh, w uh, was Asia Tech was that a Renault or was that a Ferrari? That was something. No, that was a that was a different one. Uh, yeah, that was it. Was another sponsored engine though. They didn't. It, that was not a manufacturer. Um, but, but okay, let's let's take a step life. back. <laughs> Let, let's take a step yeah, back though and look Philip at these Morris. cars though, and say like, okay, of the of the cars in NASCAR, you can go out and buy their equivalent because they're doing what the Camaros and Mustangs now. Camaro Mustang Camry, isn't it? Or nominally, yeah. Uh, or is yeah, in the Cup Series, it is the Supra is their Xfinity car. <laughs> so yeah, it, you know, it's funny. I hadn't seen the Xfinity Supra. Like I had heard that that was what they were doing, but I hadn't actually seen a, a seen one until this week. And uh, that is that is quite a thing. Uh, <laughs> well, you can uh, you can buy those cars though, even though the Supra is like. Yeah. A, a stupid expensive sports car and somehow nascar which was supposed to be sedans has turned into sports car racing let's just blow right yeah. past that but meanwhile going back to other kind of manufacturers i've never even thought to buy a car because i saw it race i never looked at like oh you know mustangs are really winning in nascar i better go buy one of those because unless coyote's gonna make it for me it's gonna have nothing to do with the nascar <laughs> Well, you're in the one country that would be influenced on the cars that race to buy, but yeah, that, whatever. But, well, but that, traditionally, at least, yeah. That that race doesn't even do anything anymore because Holden doesn't exist. They started racing Camaros in Australia, a country where they do not sell the Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they were supposed to start, and then they said they're not going to now, right? Is, is that what happened? I think the, the Corvette might be coming over, but... Oh, boy. Pretty much Australia is a, is going to be a dumping ground because you know how most countries are like, oh, we're only going to have electric cars by like 2035. Right. Yeah. Australia charges you extra tax if you buy an electric car. Huh. Interesting. Ooh. The Liberal Party says, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. So, yeah, I guess Australia will just get whatever can't be sold elsewhere. Pretty much. And what makes that even funnier is... They're like, oh, well, clearly that's some sort of propping up of the oil industry, even though Australia has like all the coal in the world and right. electric cars are just coal powered. Yeah. And, if and your they, electricity is coal powered, and they which don't, I imagine Australia's is. And, and they don't want you getting electric cars, <laughs> even though they're powered by coal. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. I bought a scooter. 
Me, me and my 14 <laughs> horses, I, I call my Honda ADV the stable. It's 150 cc's. <laughs> oh, baby. Have, have you named the 14 horses yet? Uh, disappointing, <laughs> asthmatic, glue. Uh, <laughs> so so I far, mean, I'm happy I got a bright red one, so maybe people might see me. And I have a ridiculously neon helmet again, so hopefully people see me. And now people do see me, but they just make eye white. contact and they slowly merge into me anyway. I've had two red cars uh, over the past 13 years, and uh, I think red vehicles are just invisible to other people. That's, <laughs> that's been my observation. So, that aren't cops? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if a cop pulls me over, it's going to be such a fun time anyway. Because I, I, have, no. I have the... Oh, wait, I have one here. I have the, I have the loser L. What? Why, <laughs> why is this getting... This is yellow. This isn't green. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I have my loser L's on the back of my... Uh, scooter so i'm pretty sure if i get pulled does over hurt? does that say you're only allowed to go 90 kph yes Ace. is it possible to go 90 kph on that scooter uh if i lose like <laughs> 20 kilo and i'm going and downhill going i'm downhill I might, in a hurricane I, I might hit 110 really high elevation <laughs> you know it, it wasn't it wasn't bought to be a speed demon i tried doing a uh, a motorbike it didn't work I crashed. Yeah. So I, now I'm I have just trying to last last week. Yeah. Well, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying yes. to picture you going 90 kph on that thing, and that's uh, that's very amusing to me. Dude, I'm already screaming. Look at my horse when it's going 50. <laughs> and I have the nice Honda scooter. It's an ADV, so it actually has like a suspension. You know, it's set up pretty tall. Because while I'm not Kevin height, Kevin's probably damn near two meters. I'm more like. A buck eighty something, buck eighty eight, I think is is about mm. six foot tall. But yeah. you know, it's it's the proper size for Brian to try and get around. I haven't left my suburbs yet. I, I live in a place uh, called the Shire, and I haven't left the Shire yet because, again, I'm kind of limited to how fast I can go. Also, it's a scooter. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, you're probably not wanting to go on the highway with it. So. I mean. Did I ever tell you guys the story as to why I even went down this road as to get a scooter as opposed to just keep taking trains, which is what I was doing up until this point? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so obviously COVID's a thing and I don't have Australian Medicare because I am not a permanent resident. I am not a citizen. I am a temporary resident on a working visa. So when the COVID shots started to happen, they kind of did this thing where it's like, okay, everyone over... 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. And then you would imagine they would do 30, 20. But what they actually did mm. is, fuck you, everyone get them now. So okay. there was this massive rush of everyone to go get the COVID shot. And I was like, okay, where can I even get it? How can I even do this? I, I didn't want to get AstraZeneca because America didn't recognize that one. That's right. one that I could have gotten easily, but... America hasn't passed that through FDA. I didn't want that to be a problem later in life. So I had to find a place to get Pfizer vaccine. And the closest place to that is Helensburg. Now, again, I don't want to give away exactly where I live, but I live in a place called the Shire. So even if I lived in Waterfall, which I don't, it's still a bit of a trek to get to Helensburg. So Helensburg is actually in the next city over in Wollongong, not Sydney. So imagine having to go, if you lived in New York, all the way to Philadelphia. Is, is roughly right. the equivalent. So okay. I had to go to Helensburg, and because the, the train systems here for regional New South Wales, and Helensburg, while it's not regional, it's not exactly a populated town, the, the trains are only every 45 minutes. So I go from where I live to the major hub to the train that goes to Helensburg. So I, I go to Helensburg, and fun fact, Helensburg train station is at the bottom of a mountain. Helensburg, the town, is at the top of a mountain. So now uh, I'm walking up this goddamn mountain to go get my COVID shot. It's already been about two hours between right. me leaving my apartment and getting to the Helensburg train station was about two hours of both just literal travel because trains only go so fast and waiting for the goddamn train. I get to the COVID place. I get my shot. I wait my 15 minutes. Now I have to go back down the fucking mountain to go back to where I live. And to make this even better, my roommate was trying to move in that day. So my roommate was given a key by the real estate agent that didn't work. And I left yeah. his keys that definitely worked on the kitchen table for when he came in. Oh, so man. he's trying to get in. I'm trying to get back. I, I finally make it back to Helensburg train station 45 minutes until the next train. 
and I live oh, so more than a fucking hour away. <laughs> right. So you essentially got there just in time to have missed it. Yes. So five and a half hours later from door to door to get my COVID shot. So as I was waiting on the train station, I was like, I know I can't afford a car right now. And it doesn't make sense because my, my partner already has a car and we right. don't need more than one. The cars, cars and gas are very expensive here. I think gas is like seven bucks a gallon when you do the math. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, what else can I do? Let me just get like a little, you know, shitbox Honda motorbike, like a CB125, and that'll at least get me places. And then I found out it took literally half a year to get a motorcycle L between waiting in line for the course, taking the course, waiting in line to take the the written test, passing the written test, getting the L, buying a motorbike was six months. So it's because it took me literally almost an entire day to get a COVID shot is why I even bothered with this little scooter so that if I need to go to, you know, all these places that are near me, but take forever on the train, I can actually get there. Yeah, well, that's always, that's the problem of, you know, circumferential travel, right? Because trains tend to run radially. Yeah. Uh, So if you have to run in the other direction, you need some other sort of vehicle. (laughs) So that's, that's the other thing where it's just like, okay. And honestly, while this scooter is not cool, I don't think a scooter has ever been cool. I think they've always (laughs) been fun. It's, it's impossible not to smile on this thing. It's such a silly, stupid little vehicle, but it's so, it's so fun. (laughs) It's so silly. (laughs) Go like Beatles. Yeah, that's true. You, you know, a wheelbarrow actually would have solved your problem of coming back from the uh, <laughs> from the COVID shot because you could have just you know jumped in the wheelbarrow and got to the train station faster and barreled None straight of this down. Would have been necessary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then you would have got there just in time for the train to hit you because you couldn't stop before you went on the tracks. <laughs> My favorite part is because uh, the reason Hellenberg's train station is so low is there's actually an old abandoned. Uh, train tunnel down there that they clearly just kind of sort of took over but the original tunnel yeah. was only one direction so they they bored a new tunnel that was two yeah i mean trains you know are not well known for liking to climb steep grades uh you know something about the entire system being built around low rolling resistance uh yeah does, doesn't really lend itself to climbing things i don't know so. man again but helensburg absolutely beautiful uh i would have loved my lovely stroll through the mountainy town of helensburg if it wasn't for the fact that i was trying to get to a covid shot on time and then right. once i got the covid shot i knew there was a time bomb before i started feeling like ass so <laughs> Yeah. Well, did you at least beat that time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I got, I got essentially I, I get insomnia when I get COVID shots, so I just didn't sleep. Yeah. Either that or I was really go. hyped up from from running up and down a mountain. Who knows? <laughs> so, yeah, that that is why I have my little little Honda Scooty. But I also have motorcycle gear because I planned on having a full motorcycle. So I, I must look a proper, <laughs> proper cock on this thing <laughs> Not for the next booster. Well, if you can't. Uh, you can't ride like Rossi. At least you can slide like him. <laughs> uh, Marquez now, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they actually so do. We, we, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, well I was, uh, we, we got very far away very quickly from things you wouldn't buy because of the race car you saw them on. Um, <laughs> well, Would you buy Repsol right. now? <laughs> I've always just gotten mobile, if I'm being honest. And I know mobile has had race cars, but I don't think they've had any recently. Mm. yeah i'm thinking like jeremy mayfield uh that's like we were paul, talking about mobile one the other day yeah <laughs> yeah early paul tracy when he was still a nerd uh. <laughs> i mean another brand that i like i knew it but i never like they never made anything i needed to buy is you know these guys right here the the people were lampooning <laughs> like stp like i know they they sponsored richard petty and richard petty won all the races but like, yeah. what do they even make anymore? And why well, would you ever still make the same stuff? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I mean, Richard Petty's greatest success was over by the time he was sponsored by STP. I mean, <laughs> and he just wanted you to soften TJ tires. Yeah. If you look at his win totals, like he, you know, I mean, yeah, he was still winning races in that time, but you know, by the time sponsors were even a, a major factor, he, his best days were behind him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, STP, uh, you know, it was just essentially just some crap that you put in your oil. Um, and they've basically never changed it because it's, I don't know, it just seems like a gimmick product to me, but I think they also do some, uh, like stable knockoffs these days too. 
Yeah, and that, that's, I mean, at some point, they, in addition, like, the, the original SCP was SCP oil treatment. Uh, even by the, I mean, I remember even when I was a kid, there was also SCP gas treatment. So I guess that's that's that. Um, I don't. I mean, it's a whole product range now, but I have no idea. Octane booster, all that stuff. You could still find it. Uh, I think yeah. they make like the you know brake fluid, power steering fluid. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. at this point, it's just a brand that they put on stuff. I mean, it was even uh, in the early '90s. There was a like an armor all knockoff that was STP son of, son of a gun. It was called, <laughs> and uh, the commercial had like Richard Petty, you know, with sunglasses on and a bottle of this not armor all and he's like did your car look terrible then shoot it and he, he sprays it and wipes it he's like yeah that's better so like a grand prix <laughs> with just one shiny circle on it in a junkyard <laughs> i think that's a, that's actually from a commercial of another like armor all thing where they just pull a car from a junkyard and throw it on I, there and it's just one was, circle new, on it <laughs> that was new finish i think uh which was a liquid was it you know, a, liquid, a liquid wax yeah an orange that. container on yep yep that was on during uh like you know like early 90s f1 races in the morning i remember that like getting up in the morning to watch motorsports monday <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i remember that they were like they were like we went to this junkyard in the arizona desert and we hauled out this car and now look at this one spot it's so shiny so yeah um meanwhile I, yeah, uh, like the the products that are car related that i've ever bought that i've ever been even brand loyal to i think is turtle wax because it it didn't swirl the daylights out of my car you're welcome kevin yeah <laughs> uh uh what else oh mother's uh car wash mm. but like even when it came to things that logically you would think i would get a brand name of and kevin i know you've been having a problem with this i would always get like the pep boys branded uh headlights and taillights i wouldn't there exactly like I, I reckoned it was a light bulb how how complex mm. could you know the 30 dollar right. light bulb be compared to the 12 dollar light bulb mm. light bulb I'm but. just thinking of how many, <laughs> uh, so on, on your car. So for those of you who don't know, Kevin's car is Brian's old car. Uh, the access to change the headlamps is decent. Uh, on the Mark seven, yeah, yeah, on the Mark seven, yeah. you can easily change the one. Uh, but the other one clashes with everything in the world. <laughs> and there's like a quarter inch of space on that side. So I have broken multiple bulbs just trying to get the carrier back into the uh, back into the, the assembly, which is great. Just using a similar to that SCX design stolen from T Jets. Yeah, exactly. That was well, definitely yeah, the, exactly. the tail light fixture too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's you know putting the bulb into a carrier and then just having a breech lock for the carrier into the into the uh, lamp assembly. You know whatever kind of makes sense. But you would be surprised how hard it is to line that up when you are working blind upside down and in a tight space. It's amazing. <laughs> or typically in the rain or cold when they right. go out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I, Kevin, I thought you said the, the headlights kept getting eaten by the old rabbit. Yeah. It didn't matter what I put in them. They just it just kept going. You got corrosion in them and stuff like that. Every time I clean them, it's still like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, and we have talked about this on the podcast before for our legacy listeners. Uh, <laughs> Listener. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he's around anymore, man. I think uh, you scared him off. Man. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, the whole no name rule might have uh, might have scared him off uh, with um, with that car. That's the one where the squirrel ate the wiring harness and VW Linden fixed it with electrical tape and zip ties so that might be your problem if you look at the wiring harness in the the main engine bay yeah i haven't done that gotten that far yet yeah i i would recommend it because i'm pretty sure they just taped it up and didn't replace a single goddamn wire because linden and to mm -hmm. tell people who haven't been with us since you know 2017 uh a squirrel got into the rabbit ate a lot of wiring more or less ate the wiring harness and i couldn't get people to quote it I brought it to multiple right. repair shops. They wouldn't even quote it. I finally had to bring it back to where I bought it. And I think they charged me like 120 bucks and they fixed it with like bubble gum and hope. <laughs> well, I mean, five years on, it's, it's working. still running. So, yeah, if it's stupid and yeah. it works, it's not stupid. There you go. <laughs> Got a lot of mileage on it lately. Oh, yeah. what's it up to now? Because I think I sold it with like 70 something. It's like 84. Ah, that's not bad. 
not bad. I mean, I'm almost that much on my 2017, although barely any since October, since I'm only driving on weekends now. Well, here's an interesting thing that'll bring us back on topic because I'm the one who keeps derailing us. Uh, yeah, way to go, Brian. Yeah, no, I'm great <laughs> at this. Uh, the one thing that we do kind of always go out of our way to buy nice ones of is tires. And what's even yeah. funnier is I don't think there's any, are there any tire wars going on in racing anymore? Because like, uh, like hardly. I always get Michelin, I mean, but the only racing I watch these days is F1 and that's Pirelli. And I, I would never buy a Pirelli tire. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I, well, it's funny about Pirelli and F1, especially, I mean, on their previous forays in F1, when it was not a control tire, they were always like the tire that, you know, they're like, oh, that team got stuck with Pirellis. Oh, it sucks for them. They'd be doing great if they were not on them. Um, but then, you know, Pirelli came back to F1 as the control tire in 2011. And, you know, F1 had seen the crazy Canadian Grand Prix in 2010, where the track surface just wasn't matched to the tires. And it created, you know, these crazy strategies people were running because the tires were wearing very quickly. And, uh, you know, Bridgestone left at the end of that year and Pirelli came in and F1 said to Pirelli, hey, make the tires wear out faster so that there'll be these crazy strategy games being played. And um, Pirelli went, no problem. Yeah, they were like, oh, that's fine. You know, we we'll did a great make, job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll we'll just make ourselves look terrible by having chunks of rubber flying off our tires throughout the race. No problem. Whatever you say. And then everybody complained about it for, you know, the first 10 years. <laughs> um, you know, or at least, you know, laughed about it, like made a mockery of Pirelli. But they were just doing what they were told. Um, but they did a good job of it, too. Are they making yeah, money you know, off that? How dare you make multiple compounds? <laughs> I, I don't know how much money they could possibly be making off that. Um, I mean, I'm sure you know. They, you know, it, it has to be a losing proposition. They, I'm sure they're just doing it for the for the exposure. For the exposure of uh, tires that don't last thirty laps. Right. If you watched I today's mean, race in Australia, Brian, you would have known they did. Well, yeah, yeah but he he would have literally gotten a penalty if he finished the race, so he had to pit. To put something else on his car <laughs> to not get penalized because of course well, every Williams racing series is upside down world well i mean that rule goes back to when bridgestone was solely control tire that you have to use both compounds or more than one compound yeah uh, the, the australia joke that was running around is uh people were surprised they didn't have to switch the motors to two stroke because they're upside down <laughs> did you watch my f1 review no because i didn't watch the race until this morning and i didn't want to have anything spoiled all right. Yeah, I, I do watch him. It's just one of those things where, like, I was just hoping if you would have got the one person that would have laughed the hardest about it would have been you. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it, it's on my list of things to watch. It's just one of those things where I want to like, OK, so because I'm in Australia and I'm not going to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, I do know this one was at four o'clock in the afternoon, but I was with my girlfriend and girlfriend more important than silly cars. But normally <laughs> the races are at like four in the morning and I right. have to wake up, not look at my phone type in the URL to watch the F1 replay without seeing anything about my computer. Cause one time I just typed in the URL to um, watch the F1 replay and in the search bar, Google just popped up the results and I was like, fuck you. I didn't even hit enter. <laughs> that was me this morning. I had to stay off everything to uh, yeah. rewatch it at 9 AM. Yeah. I just, I just gave up and, and let it happen when I got up this morning. Cause I, I realized that what, I wasn't going to watch it you know, when it was over. So, it was a good race too. I, I was, I yeah, was happy to see diversity in the top 10. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's, you know, we've had three good races so far this year, I would say. Well, it's, so, I, I just think this it's what nice an when... average one looks like. Huh? Yeah. I said, if this is what the average one looks like, it's not bad. You know, there was yeah. no following. You were still able to, uh, if this is what a boring race this year will look like, it was, it could be worse, you know? Yeah, I mean, there, there was really no, no race for first, but the rest of the race was interesting. And, and I'm personally rooting for Magnuson because I just want to see how far the replacement <laughs> driver can go. Yeah, well, it was not Haas's day in general, but, uh, you know. Couldn't last uh, forever. You know, Williams, however, had a top 10. Will Williams, also known as, why are you still here? <laughs> I think it's funny that Williams and McLaren are both back there um, consistently. I mean, McLaren had a little bit of a better day, but uh, it's like the 90s are happening at the back of the grid. <laughs> And it's like the reliability problems that we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely mixing things up. It's mixing things up. And also like the more I kind of watch this, 
Uh, this is like the first F1 season I'm watching in earnest. I kind of watched a little bit of the last season at the end because uh, my mm-hmm. roommate was watching and I was like, well, if it's on, I might as well sit down and watch it. Uh, yeah. Is the fact that, you know, you have your team, you know, car and it's a mix of, OK, these people seem to hate each other even more than just standard people racing each other. Because <laughs> like near the end, it really did look like Hamilton was going to try and run his own teammate off the road to get the third. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, wait, but you guys are on the same team. So in theory, like the manufacturing championship, which is where you make your money, you shouldn't mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that because coming third, fourth is better than two cars crashing into each other and DNF. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the, the problem of number one drivers always, though, right? I mean, when you are the nominal number one driver in the team and you're off to a bad start like Hamilton is, I think it's easy to get that red mist and say, all right, I got to grab some points every, any way I can. Uh, even if I'm risking taking out my teammate, even you know, if his teammate supposed- is like third in the championship right now, I think, or is he second? He's yeah, second, isn't he? he's, he's, second. He's, he's second right now. I mean, he's way behind Leclerc, but he is second. Yeah. Yeah. So if he just keeps going, like, do you, do you let Hamilton, rip away a legitimate chance from a, a decent driver or do you go no hamilton has to win get the fuck back there you you yeah, know what it, you did when you joined this team <laughs> uh i mean it it's that's what happens you know when when there is that weird that awkward phase of a season when uh when the number two driver is excelling it's like well at some point you just gotta let him go uh you know you, you can't just hold him back forever if he's really pulling away so <laughs> yeah yeah, and it's one of those things where we saw like Bottas go from Mercedes down to Alfa Romeo, and like there, I'm sure he had no delusion that it was going to take years to turn Alfa Romeo into anything that could win. Right? I yeah, mean, they're, not, they're not winning anything. Yeah, they're they're not going anywhere. I mean, well, you know, they have they have one decent driver, two bad cars, and one gimmick driver. You know, it's like, oh, we have the first Chinese driver. Look at him go. He's got one point. That's all he'll ever do. <laughs> right. And Ferrari money in their wind tunnel. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I don't even understand B teams. Like, why is Alfa Romeo a team if Ferrari is a team? Why is Alfa Tauri a team if Red Bull is a team? Like, I mean, the the simple answer is that running an F one team is so stupid expensive that there's only a handful of organizations that want to do it or can do it. So unless you want there to only be four teams, you have to let the B team thing happen. But like, They're also kind of like a guinea pig too for whatever yeah. stuff they want to try. Pretty much like what Red Bull used Alpha Tari or Toro Rosso yeah. for with Honda. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, when that when that first started with because really the first like obvious example of it was Toro Rosso. Uh, when Red Bull just bought Minority, which was the worst team, and they're like, "Oh, this is our junior team now." Um, <laughs> F2 doesn't exist. This is our junior team now. Yeah, this is our junior team now. They're they're going to keep running V10s, even though uh, they're going to take a weight penalty for it. Um, I think it, uh, what was it? The uh, the air inlet too was like it was the air inlet. It was an air inlet. Like a, use like a a bendy straw as like an air inlet. <laughs> <laughs> Feed those ten cylinders through this bendy straw. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just ran last year's basically last year's Red Bull with the. Uh, I mean, at the time last year's Red Bull, that still had the V10 in it. Um, but, you know, when that happened, it was like, oh, that's crazy that they're like actively saying this is our junior team. Um, but there was a, I mean, there was some version of that in, prior to that. Um, because Flavio Briatore, when he owned Bennington in the 90s, uh, had his hands at a couple of other teams and would just move drivers around. Uh, trying like to think Minority. Teams were. Yeah, Minority was one of them, right? Um, yeah. He, he, yeah, he had, he had a hand in a couple. I think in, th- in three teams at one point, because uh, there were like you know, I'm thinking like '94, even in the mid '90s, he was like moving. I mean, he had Schumacher in the one seat, but he was moving moving the guys around in the second seat, uh, basically between his teams. So there was some version of it then, but you know, anyway, by the time Red Bull did it, it was like, oh wow, they're actively saying this is our junior team. That's crazy. And then within a few years, that's what everybody was doing. Um, and you know, now the the couple of teams that are not playing that game are basically Williams and McLaren and look where it's getting them. Yeah. So. But again, like F1 has so many weird things to it. That's definitely one of them. The whole, like, again, I, I constantly scratch my head going, who's making money off this? Like, yeah, maybe no, the drivers, it's hard, to, 
Like <laughs> it is it is hard to imagine that anybody makes money doing this, right? I mean, when you think about how much money they're spending, like it's crazy yeah. that, like, how much how much TV money there must be because that's like, essentially how, the, how much the money is, is Williams and Alpha uh, Aston Martin actively setting on fire to do nothing this year. <laughs> well, Aston Martin's probably setting a shitload on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look a uh, wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, look another. <laughs> I think what do they spend like a uh, I think the max now is 170 or something like that. But you had the top team spending upwards of like 4 and 500 million that was, you know, said. Right. Yeah, that was what they were admitting to spending. But the best part about all this is like the uh, you know, like the the GT racing and whatnot and the hypercar and all that. They just take their guys that, you know, they hey, we can't afford you anymore. We're going to start, you know, a hypercar program or whatever now. Right. Well, so in two or three years, you're going to see all those guys. Yeah. Well, what, what I find personally hilarious is Ferrari, who has always kind of been, you know, their stubbornness has been their kind of draw, is coming out with a Ferrari utility vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Because the Ferrari, Ferrari sells cars to fund their F1 team. So, Pretty much. Like, and I that, mean, that, of, that was true. I mean, that was that was definitely true at one point. I mean, you know, Ferrari is so much just another Fiat brand at this point, uh, which I mean, Fiat has owned Ferrari since the 70s. But uh, as Fiat has grown to be such a massive corporation and, you know, owning Chrysler and uh, is it Peugeot that they own one of the one of the French companies, uh, Patron, Satona, Renault, probably not Renault. Uh, I don't remember. It's one of them. Uh, is because it's not Fiat anymore. It's Stellantis. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. I mean, now, now that it's just such a massive company, uh, I feel like Ferrari. You know, I don't know if it's so if the income stream is so much straight from you know buy a Ferrari and support Ferrari F one because they're just taking money from you know from all over the company at this point and throwing it into that or you know or Alpha for that matter. <laughs> Uh, and Haas yeah and well, Haas yeah I mean uh, yeah that, that is the <laughs> ultimate question though about sponsorship if you had the means would you even get a Ferrari yes no uh, that, I mean it's it's an off the wall question well, but but it's uh, the ultimate it's the ultimate sponsor thing there essentially if if Ferrari is is doing this to try and sell cars which we know they're not they're doing this to win but in right. theory you know, you put Ferrari on everything so that when the lottery winner gets his lottery ticket, you know, right. oh, I want to buy my my look how rich I am car. You have many, right. many options these, these days. Do you even buy Ferrari? Because I don't. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I, uh, it's an interesting question. Because like Mercedes I, has, a, has a slightly better time of it. Yeah. I mean, if money was no object at all, I guess I would buy a Ferrari. If by a Ferrari, I mean an F40. An F40. <laughs> yeah, I mean, given money as no object at all, um, you know, I, would I be excited to buy, you know, just any Ferrari that I could get my hands on eh, just because it is one? Uh, Here's the uh, money out. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Would you like a 308? <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Would I buy it just because of the association with F1? Mm, probably not. I guess. Because, uh, like, mm, okay, I, th I think that's that's a good one to end on because we're clipping an hour now. Would any of us buy any car? Like, ignoring the sponsors, because I think we clearly answered the question is, no, we don't We don't buy shit based on sponsors, and sometimes we actively know to avoid stuff if it's sponsoring certain cars. <laughs> but has anyone ever thought of any car company more fondly because they saw it in any race? I will admit that the the most respect to the extent that I ever had any respect for Buick, uh, <laughs> it was because of their stupid IndyCar engine, <laughs> uh, because I associated it directly with the Buick Grand National, which was a cool car, their coolest car anyway. Uh, yeah, because it was a turbo V6. Buick exists similar in such to the a one Twilight that Zone now. Apparently, it's like still really popular in China, which is why Buick exists. That's yeah, that's why it survived. That's why when they had to kill Pontiac or Buick, they were like, "Sorry, Pontiac," uh, because you know we Pontiac, have to sponsor uh, the Alfa Romeo F1 team now and build engines for them. Yeah, I mean Buick was uh, you know they figured Buick was 
you know, a, had more growth potential because it was popular in a growing market. Um, so that's why Buick still exists. And Meanwhile, I think everyone not. in this call is a solid 40 years out from even thinking about a Buick. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think anything would ever cause me to, especially again, especially now when it's when they've just totally given up on Buick being anything but like a bucket of wallpaper paste. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I can't even imagine. Um, I mean, the only the only fun car Buick has had in my lifetime was the Grand National. And that was, you know, when yeah. I was a small child. So, All right. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think we've kind of run out of steam here, folks. It's been over an hour. Uh, thank you very much if you've made it this far. If you've made it this far, put in the comments that you made it this far. We'll make the ending gag <laughs> about you personally if you have. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming along for the ride. We're going to see how many of these we can crank out. Guys, we did it. We had we had one with all three of us. <laughs> hey, that's how many Tycos there are on my screen. One for each of us. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> you approve the justice of our culture. <laughs> Remember to <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Later, guys. See ya. Good night.